Hey everybody, Mike here. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about VRF Lite in NSXT. What is it? What does it look like from a high level architectural overview and all of that stuff. As usual, I'm hoping to take out all of the fluff and just kind of distill it down to what you need to know about it. I won't be doing any implementation in this video, Oh no! but it's definitely something I have on my radar to actually show you guys how it works in real, you know, in the real lab, I guess real lab lab production well, we'll just call it lab production how about that so that said let's get to it but before we do you guys need to subscribe i'm at 733 subs as of this recording right now still 733. i gotta be honest with you guys when i first started this channel i did all my research and people were saying it was going to take usually about two years to hit a thousand subs I'm at 733 and this is month six. I can't tell you how awesome that is. And it's also kind of freaky. Like who wants to watch me? That's kind of, I'm questioning your sanity right now. I'm done talking. Let's get into the VRF Lite stuff. So the first thing you should know about VRF Lite is that it ultimately is a feature in NSXT that allows us to segment between tenants. So picture maybe I had, I don't know, an engineering department over here and I had an, another engineering department for another part of the organization or something like that. I can segment between the two and I can keep the VMs in each of those tenants completely separate. They can be connected to separate uh, segments, separate logical routers. Everything is completely separate from a logical standpoint. Keep in mind, this is all in software, so we're not needing to buy additional hardware. We could have, say, a single cluster of vSphere hosts and we could have multiple tenants within that environment using VRF Lite. Now I know those of you that are really technical are probably wondering how NSX implements this. Well, the first thing I wanna point out is there's no multi-protocol BGP or MPLS or anything like that behind the scenes. Basically, NSX is just kind of chopping up the logical routers and I'm gonna get into that in a little bit, but that's at a high level how it works. That said, it does run BGP from the VRFs, and I'll explain some of the terminology, and I got a slide coming up that'll make it a little bit clearer for you, but basically think about it like this. It runs BGP from NSX VRFs to non-NSX, so to your physical network, top of rack router switches, whatever the case is, it'll run BGP between there, but there's no BGP like within NSX to implement VRF Lite, if that makes sense. So the best way I can explain VRF Lite is think about it like you're taking a tier zero, a tier zero logical router, and you're kind of splitting it up, you're virtualizing it in a way. So it's kind of the same way that vSphere did for physical servers, where we took a physical server, we virtualized everything, and then now you have a bunch of VMs ultimately, which are just kind of mini servers living on that physical server. It's the same idea. So you're gonna have your tier zero that you had before, but now you're gonna have individual VRFs within that tier zero, and they'll kind of look like a tier zero in the GUI, but basically they'll inherit some things from that kind of parent T0. So some of those things that will not be inherited, so each of those virtualized T zeros or VRFs, they'll get things like their own IPs. So your VRF will actually have its own external interface IPs going to the physical network. It'll also have its own BGP neighbors, which I'll show you in the next slide. It'll have its own gateway firewall. It'll run NAT on its own. And basically that's it. There's a couple of other things that you can tune and tweak for that VRF T0. But as far as things that are inherited from that parent T0, because remember when you create the VRF, you're basically gonna link it to the parent. And when you link it to that parent, it's going to inherit certain things. That'll be things like the HA mode, the edge cluster, uh, BGP local AS number. So if I have say BGP local AS 100 on my parent T0, and I go say, I wanna create a VRF and I link it to that T0, well guess what? I'm using AS 100 for that VRF instance as well. So I know that was a lot of information, so let me break it down a little bit different. Let me show you how we did this the old way. So before there was VRF Lite, you could actually accomplish this functionality from NSXT, but you kind of did it in, in my opinion, sort of a messy way. So let's take this example. We have this single vSphere host here. We've got a single tenant. We've got an edge cluster and a T0 sitting on top of that edge cluster. And by the way, when I say edge cluster, I wanna be clear if you followed my other videos through my NSXT from scratch series, this should be clear. But just in case it's not, when I say an edge cluster, I'm talking about a cluster that has multiple edge VMs inside of it. So when I say T0, for example, that would be actually living on an edge VM. 
That said, we also have the physical router here. This could be, again, this could be a physical router or a layer three switch or whatever the case is. It doesn't really matter. Now let's say we wanted to set up this tenant. We go ahead and into the GUI. We say, okay, we want to create a T1. We link it to a T0. That's all pretty standard. That's the same NSX you know and love if you followed my other stuff. I go in there then and I say, okay, I'm going to create a segment. This is just a logical segment. It's an overlay segment. And I connect that to the T1. No big deal up until this point. At that point, we then go to the T0. We set up BGP from the T0 directly to a physical router. And everything's good. We have routes being exchanged. So this physical router is learning about these segments or these subnets, I should say, over here from this segment A. It's learning about that via BGP. And vice versa, that T0 is learning about basically all routes outside of NSX from that physical router. So that's nothing new or it shouldn't be anything really new. But let's expand it to another tenant. So now we have this tenant B here and we go ahead and we create the same kind of constructs. We create a T1 there. We create this segment B here. We connect it to a T1. But here's the thing. We would have to create a separate edge cluster. And here's why, because within NSXT, you can only have one T0 per edge cluster. So that's where it breaks ultimately when we were talking about multi-tenancy before, is yes, you could do it, but you had to have multiple edge clusters per tenant. So in this case, I deploy another edge cluster, edge cluster 02, including my edge VMs. I deploy this or configure this T0. I connect that T1 up to the T0, and then you guessed it, I now configure BGP from this T0 to the physical network. This works fine. There's no reason why it's, it doesn't work. I think the biggest problem is just a waste of resources because we're talking about what if you had 30 tenants? You would need 30 edge clusters and at least, you know, for HA, 60 edge VMs, which is just a huge waste. So that's where VRF Lite comes into the picture. It comes into the picture to solve this mess right here. So let's take a look at the way NSXT is doing this with VRF Lite. We have those same tenants here. We have tenant A, tenant B. I didn't change anything here. I still have a segment in each of these tenants and they're connected to T1s. Now, in this case, I only have one edge cluster, and we'll just say, for example, again, I didn't depict it on the slide here, but let's just say we have two edge VMs here. So we have, you know, we'll call it edge one, edge two, doesn't really matter. Logically, it's all just one edge cluster. Now, inside of that edge cluster, I've gone and I've said, I wanna create a T0, and I configure what's called a VRF in NSXT Manager. So if you've ever set up a T0, you'll actually see there'll be a dropdown where instead of create a T0, you'll select VRF. When you create that VRF, basically that's that part where I said you're virtualizing the T0. So this blue VRF actually kind of looks and feels just like its own T0, but it's not. It's actually just kind of a child of this T0 that we have here, this green one. And then basically from there, everything else is the same NSX you know. You'd go to your T1, and instead of your uplink being this T0, this green T0, your uplink would actually be blue-VRF. And then the same thing would be true for the other tenant. So we'd create, say, a red-VRF, and then we link that T1 up to that red VRF. And then same thing as you saw here with the blue VRF, we set up BGP from the tenants directly from these VRFs. So it's not a requirement that you run BGP from the underlying or from the parent T0 to the physical network. That's not a requirement at all. You would just basically be running BGP from the VRFs, if that makes sense. Now, I do want to mention that when we think about this design, it, you can tend to look at it and kind of think that, okay, well, how does it route between tenants, right? If I want to go from tenant A to tenant B, how do I do that? And the answer is that routing would actually have to happen on the physical fabric. So in this case, you would actually route to your edge cluster and then it would route out to the physical network and then come back in to go to that other tenant. Now there is ways that you can do it with static routing as well, but there are some caveats as well. Um, there's some restrictions around NAT and that sort of thing. So just be aware of that if you are interested in doing it, look through the release notes and that sort of thing. But for the most part, it's safe to say that routing between tenants would occur generally as of 3.1 through the physical fabric. So that's all I have for you in this episode. I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. Until next time, take care. Time to give the people what they want.